Good morning. I like this reading today a lot. I think Jesus woke up today and put on his sassy pants before he went out. Because some of these Pharisees come, and they warn Jesus that Herod wants to kill him. Now, their motivation in the story isn't very clear. Generally, we see the Pharisees as the enemy. Luke is usually a little kinder to the Pharisees. But are they really trying to warn Jesus? Or are they just trying to scare him off? Either way, Jesus doesn't take it to heart. He says, go tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. So basically, he tells Herod to go jump in a lake. But first, he calls Herod a fox. And that's an interesting thing. Now, I googled to see if foxes actually live in Israel, and I couldn't really find anything except that uh, there are various types of foxes on all the continents except Antarctica. But I suppose that is really neither here nor there. The point is the character of a fox. Now, a fox is a very beautiful animal. And if you come here on the right time of day, you can see our resident beautiful fox sunning himself in the cemetery. But a fox is a carnivore. They are very sly. They are cunning and sneaky. They like to snatch up small animals. And they're very smart. They're smart enough to know that chickens are sitting ducks, so to speak because chickens are found in enclosures, so they're very easy to catch for a fox. So Jesus here calls Herod a bloodthirsty predator, a sneaky man, a man who's out for an easy kill. You see, because Herod had power, and he felt threatened by Jesus, because everyone was talking about the power that Jesus had. But what he didn't realize was that their two powers were completely different. Because Herod's power and authority comes from man. He took it. He killed and schemed and worked with Rome to oppress the people. This kind of power is taken by force and it is kept by force. But Jesus's power comes from God. This is the power to heal, to teach, to lead, to accept people. Not the power of the fox. Rather, a hen. But a hen isn't really the brightest animal in the animal kingdom, right? But that's the image that Jesus uses. And that's, that's a key image in the story. He knows that in Jerusalem, the people are going to turn against him and kill him. Yet, he still longs to gather the children of Jerusalem under his wings like a mother hen does for her brood but they are not willing. And this is what God also desires from us. God wants to give fatherly goodness and motherly love and protection. Sometimes people get caught up in the gender of God. You might have noticed over the past years that I try very hard not to use any pronouns when I talk about God. Um, it gets a little clunky sometimes, I can admit. And sometimes I slip up and say he. But I think it's important to note that God does not have a gender. Jesus is using the image of the mother hen. And this is not the only instance of this kind of in imagery in the Bible. For example, in Hosea, God is a fierce mother bear. And in Isaiah, a mother giving birth and breastfeeding her child, among others. So what's my point? My point is, whichever pronoun you use is fine. God appears to us in a way that we can relate to, and it doesn't matter what gender that is, which is why God came in the first place in the form of Jesus, a human being. And I will concede the point that Jesus was a man. Don't worry. <laughs> But 
God came in the form of Jesus so that we could relate to God in a new way and answer the calling that God gives us. Is in the Old Testament, God tends to seem to be very scary and vengeful with power used for punishment, but not here. The power is different now. Here we have a call to come together in love under God's wings as a mother hen gathers her chicks. But like Jerusalem in the story, we sometimes refuse to answer the invitation. Jesus' power is that of love and healing and deliverance, and we're asked to join him in this, even as those foxes circle us. These foxes that like to sow fear into our minds and whisper doubts into our ears. Because people are always promising us something, right? If you've ever watched TV, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you're watching any of this political coverage that we have now, you know what I'm talking about. They tell us that if we don't choose them, something really bad's going to happen to us. We're definitely going to lose all our money, or we're definitely going to lose our freedom, or we're definitely going to die. But this is all just fear-mongering. These are the foxes that circle our hen house, trying to get that power, but the kind of power that Herod has. But Jesus stands against them and says, Hey, I'm not giving into that fear that Herod's going to kill me. I'm still going to do my work. And I'm going to gather people into a community. And I'm going to live life in a different way. And we are all to do this, too. We can't let our fears take over our minds and our hearts. God calls us to gather into a community together of love and respect, to welcome all people, even those who reject us or hate us. It's hard to do this in our world, because our world is a world where negativity reigns. Now, when we answer God's call, and we decide to become sheltered under God's wing, we're protected. We are given this power of love. And God's arms enfold us like a loving mother, giving us strength to face the world out there, to stand up against the injustice that we see, Or on a smaller scale, to face the stares, the laughs that we get when we dare to talk about our faith in public. Oh, no. (coughs) So that we can live our lives in love, no matter what the world is telling us that we need, or whatever the world tells us to fear, we are safe with God. And God will always be with us to support and care for us, and there is nothing to fear. And we'll always be there for each other. That's another one of our callings, as the body of Christ in the world, sharing Christ's love to all people because we are God's children. And that is the true power of God, a power that Herod would never understand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.